Hello, and welcome to the last JavaScript SEO Q&A or office hours uh, for May 2021. Uh, today is the 26th of May. The next one will be on the 9th of June, we have just established. Um, if you are not familiar with the format, every two weeks, uh, I offer these where you can ask questions on YouTube. So uh, if you are watching these on, on the YouTube recording, uh, you can go to our channel and check out the uh, the community tab in which I post um, the, the thread for each of these episodes, where you can ask your questions in the thread. Or you can join us um, for the live recording, as a bunch of people have done today. That's amazing. I'm really happy to see you all here. Uh, yeah, so let's actually go over the YouTube submitted questions first, and then I'll open the floor for audience questions here. So the first question is how to deal with uh, real capture or recapture, recapture assets cost, page speed issues. I'm actually not familiar with how exactly uh, recapture um, has an influence on the page speed, but I can imagine that third-party JavaScript in general does have that. But as I'm not familiar with it or I'm not maintaining the library specifically, I would recommend uh, actually, hold on actually going to uh, their support and tell them what specifically is the issue, and then work with them to resolve these issues. Because if you are having issues, you're probably not the only one having issues. Uh, awesome. Then there's like uh, how to optimize below things in the page speed insights for my one large website. Uh, there are Google Analytics and recapture. For Google Analytics, the same thing. I would expect Google Analytics uh, support to take care of that. Um, but in general, if you have JavaScript that you're not using, uh, remove that or load it only on demand. Third party block the main thread, increase JavaScript time, uh, minimize main thread work. All of these are general suggestions that you probably have pointers to which resources specifically cause this. If it is Google Analytics and recapture, again, I would take it up with their specific support channels um, to solve that on their side rather than on my side. Because I, I frankly don't really know specifically what to do about recapture or Google Analytics. That's something to ask their support channels. And the second question is, having the full content in the HTML but collapsing it if it's too long with client-side JavaScript, aka the read more button, is that an SEO issue in 2021? Not really. Um, if it is in the HTML, if it's in the rendered HTML, so the content is there and is visible in the rendered HTML uh, in the testing tools, then we would see it as well. It's just if it's content that you really, really care about, you probably don't want to hide it behind the read more. Um, but if it's content that is important but not maybe the most important piece of content, then that's perfectly fine. That's not an, a real issue. So those were our two questions from the uh, YouTube chat. And then I see that Nayum is actually here and has raised his hand. Is there something that I, I can do uh, for you besides the scope of what you have already submitted and I have already spoken on? You're muted. Still muted. Ah, now. No, we still can't hear you. What the heck? Is it just me, or? I still can't hear you. Oh, my. I had the joy of. So other people can't hear you either, so it's not my end. You can use the chat. Don't worry about it. You can use the chat as well. I cannot hear you. I'm, I'm sorry. Also, for the third parties, again, if it's Google third party tools, ask the specific teams and their support channels, because I don't have any guidance specifically for Google third party tools, just as I don't have any specific guidance for any other third party tools. Even though those are Google tools, it's not in my scope to know about how to optimize them specifically. They all offer support channels that you can use to ask them specific questions, and that's what I would do. I would treat them as any other third party. I would try to like load them on demand or delay their loading or uh, um, defer loading as much as I can um, or kick them out if I have other alternatives that are better. And that's true for Google Tools just as well.
All right. While we can't hear Nayum, and uh, he's asking him about recapture again. As as far as I'm concerned, that's a third party um, that I don't have any specific insights for. I'm sure they offer support specifically, and that's where I would go and ask. All right, uh, Carl is asking a question. We are hosting GAJS on our own server, so we could set the cache. That sounds good to me. When we optimized PageSpeed two years ago, now it's slowing down the websites. Should we switch to Analytics.js or just update GAJS uh, to speed up websites again? That's an interesting question, again, technically about the third party uh, tool. So I would say try out both. Uh, try to see if Analytics.js is uh, fixing the problem that you were seeing previously and is actually fast. If it's still not fast enough uh, and your uh, GA JS is uh, actually faster, then I would try updating that. Um, yeah, I would actually love for more people to file issues or to bring up the issues with performance with Google Tools because, as as I said, in Google Search we treat every third party like a third party, including Google Analytics, Google Ads, Recapture, whatnot. I don't know. I don't know what out there like Tag Manager. It doesn't matter. They don't get any special treatment. They are just third parties as far as we are concerned. Talk to their support channel so that they get aware of the problem. If no one ever talks to them saying, like, hey, Google Analytics team, there is an issue with speed, they don't really have an incentive of working on that. I'm pretty sure they are already working on it, but I would still bring it up with them. They might even have solutions. Who knows? Which one is better for data in Search Console and Analytics? I mean, uh, it, for Search Console, it doesn't matter um, because Analytics doesn't matter for Search Console. Uh, for Analytics, I don't know which one is better. I'm assuming using their Analytics JS is probably easier and better. But as long as the events show up in Analytics as you expect them, it doesn't really make a difference as far as I'm aware. But again, I'm not an expert on Google Analytics. Uh, that's something to ask the Analytics people. Uh, Eugene has a question. I have a question regarding canonical tags. Oh, that's more up my alley. Google chooses random canonical for a page, for example, this article. Uh, oh, uh, interesting. Uh huh. Google chooses this one. Yeah, um, that is a thing that can happen. The thing is that the first article was bringing a good amount of probably traffic, good amount of readers. But from last week, Google chose an uh, alternate canonical URL, and the original article is gone from Google. To mention that these two articles are completely different, they are like thousands of alternate canonicals that Google chose. I have asked John before about this, and he said that sometimes Google chooses another canonical URL because maybe links have something in common. Uh, and as we use escape fragment, yeah. So escape fragment is technically deprecated. Uh, it might still work in some cases, but it's more incidental than um, planned. So uh, seeing the fact that you are using a hash bang, uh, so a fragment URL, that is very likely to cause problems in discovery and canonical selection. So if you're seeing issues with that, I would really, really try to figure out how you can migrate away from that specific URL schema. Um, it somehow worked until this point, which I think is great. Uh, if it stopped working, that's something that you definitely want to look into uh, in terms of removing it, because definitely using fragments to load different content is not a recommended strategy. It hasn't been for the last couple of years. So that's a that's a tricky one. Minila says Carl. Hmm. Uh, Dan is having a question too. Uh, you're welcome, Eugene. Uh, Dan is having a question too. Hey Martin, here's my question. I've been doing SEO for a few years, but my JavaScript is pretty weak. Any tips on how to get started learning JavaScript specifically in an SEO context? Any recommended tools or good projects that I should start on? Uh, I know a little bit, but I'm largely a rookie. Um, first things first, I find it amazing that you want to get into JavaScript and like try things out, especially looking from uh, an SEO context. Um, I would probably look at a few of the frameworks that are out there, like React.js or Angular or Vue.js, uh, React and Vue being quite popular these days. Uh, and just like trying trying around and like building a, a, a page with it and, and seeing what are potential problems or what are things that are not obvious following from the documentation. Maybe also look into them from the point of do they have documentation for SEO? What can you learn about SEO for these frameworks? Because I'm pretty sure these frameworks won't go away anytime soon. Um, and if they do, you still learn something about it. 
Um, we do have a JavaScript SEO beginner's guide that covers a bunch of things that can potentially go wrong as well. And um, yeah, in general, just like try things out with JavaScript. I don't really have a specific good resource to start with, but I think making websites with JavaScript and trying to see where problems are is probably a really, really good idea. If you want to do something very productive, then also maybe look into the open source uh, community uh, around React, around Gatsby, for instance, uh, around other static site generators like 11T. They all are open source, which means uh, most likely run by small companies or even by individuals uh, just trying to like do something nice for the community. And they probably have some sort of SEO problems, and they would probably like uh, some help with SEO. And um, if you can like look into the issues and see like, oh, what kind of SEO issues are being reported already, or are there any reported? Um, and then like trying to figure out why they happen and what to do about them, that's probably a good approach. Um, besides that, try to find people in the community. Uh, I think Tech SEO Boost is a pretty good event that has like lots of content around technical SEO and specifically JavaScript SEO. Uh, try to, to find people who are regularly doing stuff. I know that Wanli, um, so Bartosz and uh, Tomek are doing lots of JavaScript SEO experiments. They're not always on point with what they are concluding, but at least like I like really like their um, their approach, and I really like the, the way that they document their experiments transparently. Uh, Jamie Alberico, uh, the team of DeepCrawl, the team of Botify, um, lots of different people are working on JavaScript SEO and doing really, really cool stuff around the topic. So I would definitely try to follow them and see what they're up to. And also just ask questions when you see weird things that you're not exactly sure how they happen or how they worked. Uh, and yeah, play around with JavaScript. Just build sites with JavaScript and see where the problems are. Uh, another question from Nayum. Um, multiple JavaScript impact our website crawlability. JavaScript blocked the main thread. I don't sure. I'm not sure I understand that question. So you have multiple JavaScript libraries, tools, whatever on your website. And you're seeing in PageSpeed Insight, you're seeing JavaScript blocks the main thread. I'm not sure that has anything to do with crawlability, though. JavaScript blocking the main thread, that's a performance issue that has no impact on crawling. So I'm not super sure what the question is here. Can you try? Is is your microphone working now? Oh, we still don't hear you. Damn. Ah, oh, this is annoying. Okay. Uh, I think if you click on the three dots and then settings, check that the microphone picks you up. I I have a little. So when when I'm actually in my uh, so if I'm in the settings dialog for audio, it shows me like microphone and then it shows like three bars moving that show that it picks up sound. Does yours do that? We still don't hear you. No. Oh, man. Oh, man. Parag, in the meantime, again, recapture. Um, I don't know. Maybe they are. Try, try to test it in PageSpeed Insights if you are seeing impact from recapture. I think Nayum was, was saying that. Uh, that he is seeing impact from recapture. But yeah, if, it, if there is any issue um, with page loading time thanks to recapture, then I would probably go to their support forum and ask them uh, what's going on there. Uh, is, it a, is there impact on page traffic as well as bounce rate? Um, I guess that depends also a little bit on how you implement recapture. I guess uh, if like people are failing um, getting through your your recapture, then yes, that will have an, an impact on your page traffic. Uh, I don't know why are you using recapture in the first place. It would be the good question. I heard a sound. I don't know. You heard me? Man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, re recapture 
issue is actually uh, showing in page speed report mm -hmm. uh, because it's the third uh, showing in third party uh, mm -hmm. and there is a uh, many things uh, remove unused javascript third party block the main third mm -hmm. increase uh, javascript time and this is uh, javascript by uh, third party like mm -hmm. google yeah so how, how to optimize that yes because as i said that's that's up to i honestly remove it if you can that's the best thing you can do with any third party remove it if you don't need it remove it if you need it why do you need it what do you what is use google it for? Product, huh? what is doesn't, google product doesn't matter so what if it makes the page slower it makes the page slower it doesn't matter okay so uh, we need to remove that the third party i mean it, it depends it depends if you if you use it for something specifically and it does that really well then it doesn't really matter that much or if it matters that much and you need to have it then i would go to their support and ask them how to fix that or how to improve uh, that because they need to have a solution for that it's a, even if it's a google product as far as i'm concerned i work for google search not for recapture i have no idea so you would have to go through their support channels. I don't know what their support channel is. Maybe it's a mailing list. Maybe it's a forum. Maybe they have an issue tracker. Maybe you can email them. I don't know. Um, so I would ask them what are their suggestions in, in, in terms of optimizing and improving performance of recapture. Uh, if you don't need it, I would remove it. OK. That's so roughly There is mul uh, multiple JavaScript are there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's impact our uh, website crawl crawlability due uh, due to multiple JavaScripts. Nah, nah. No? has no bearing on JavaScript. Does not really have any bearing on crawlability normally. I think is uh, blocked by uh, block the main thread. That has nothing to do with crawling though. That is a page speed loading issue, not a crawling issue. Okay, okay. okay. All right. So. Just to make that very clear for everyone else in the call, because I'm pretty sure there's other people who are having similar questions or don't necessarily understand why one thing doesn't have an impact on the other thing. When we crawl, what happens is we make a network request from our servers to your web server and download whatever comes back. That then, in turn, includes multiple JavaScripts. We don't download those because we don't care. In crawling, the only thing we care about is getting the document over. Then at a later stage, later stage. So crawling is, is finished here. Crawling has done its thing, has, uh, has gotten the HTML, has gotten whatever is in the HTML. Um, and now we move forward to rendering. Now, rendering is a different thing. In rendering, we are effectively actually showing the page as or loading the page as if uh, a browser, a user would open the page as well. And there we actually download the actual assets, so the CSS, um, any, any uh, JavaScripts, any other assets that might be in there making API calls if that happens. And there, that might have an impact because one, these requests also go out of your crawl budget. It has, again, nothing to do with crawlability. When we say crawlability, what we usually mean is, can a page be crawled? The page has been crawled at this point. That's done. No issues there. But now when the JavaScripts are being loaded and there's a lot of JavaScript, then these requests call, count against your crawl budget. So it can make crawling a very large website a little slower. And when I say a very large website, I mean a website with like a million pages or more. Yeah. Then the third party block the main thread or work happening on the main thread. The main yes. thread is something that only exists during rendering. Rendering doesn't care. Rendering really does not give a shit. So for us in rendering, that is not really a problem normally. Where it is a problem though is when real users, when your actual users are going on your website, blocking the main thread makes the website unresponsive. That means like the website is loading, it may be even showing me things already. But whatever I do, whenever I click, whenever I try to scroll, nothing happens because the JavaScript blocks the main thread, so these events can't be handled. That means it has an impact on page speed. Page speed is one of the many, many ranking factors. So that's why that is important still, but not for crawling and not for rendering. Does that make sense? OK. All right.
Excellent. I've seen that like a bunch of stuff has happened in the chat in the meantime. Uh, general question, what do you wish all SEOs knew and started doing today? Um, content is important, so definitely review your content and make sure that your content is good, which depends on what you're trying to do. Like It should help your users get to whatever it is that they need to get to as quickly as possible, that is. Lots of SEOs know that, kind of ignore it because it's hard and it's not, it's not something that you can do on a checklist. You can't go like, check. I clearly have done this, right? Because it usually involves talking to multiple stakeholders. It, talks, it means talking to multiple people, maybe getting a, a copywriter involved. So there's like a lot of work involved in it. Uh, it usually pays off, but it's very indirect payoff. You can't really like pinpoint it to one specific thing. So yeah, it's, yeah, and it's not something that is like as easy as measuring the core web vitals and going like, yep, check, we've done this, like all in the green, done. Um, so yeah. Also, I wish JavaScript uh, SEOs would understand that JavaScript isn't like the new Flash, um, because per definition, the big problem with Flash is that it was kind of like a black box that was thrown into a website. So it was like its own thing. It wasn't part of the website. It was its own thing that just happened to be displayed in the browser, similar to Java applets and other applets as well. Uh, Whereas JavaScript is an integral part of the web. It actually just gives interactivity to the web platform. Um, and it's not per se bad. It's when it's being used incorrectly or when it's being overused, then it becomes a problem. Like pretty much anything that you do too much of, I, I'm pretty sure running is great for you, except if you like run 24 seven, eventually you'll probably die out of exhaustion. So is running a bad thing? I don't think so. Um, or if you run on concrete with shoes that are not properly like absorbing the shocks of the impact of your body on the, on the concrete, uh, is running a bad thing? Yes, if you do it wrong or if you do too much of it. JavaScript, the same thing. If you're doing it wrong or if you're doing too much of it, it's probably not a good thing. Uh, and lots of people are doing too much JavaScript, but uh, that's that you need to evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. You can't really just generally say that. Um, Giacomo, about third party, if you really need it and you want to speed things up, you can use edge workers to proxy and speed. That's a very, <laughs> very advanced technique of, of doing that, but I, I think you can get some improvements out of that. Uh, now, someone has raised their hand. Hold on. That was, uh, I think, Anan was ra raising his hand first and then Michael. So we'll take these. Hey, Martin, how are you? Great. How are you doing, Anan? <laughs> hey, very well, thank you. So I have kind of a three part or mm -hmm. four-part question. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last session I particip participated with you, I asked you about the Core Web Vitals being global or per country. Mm -hmm. And I think at the moment you recommend me to go to the Google I.O. session on Web Vitals. Mm -hmm. And there they stated that they are actually global, OK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a couple of a uh, CEO, CEO roundtable, CEO mm -hmm. journal covering that they might be mm -hmm. uh, by geo, but I just want to confirm that they are globally. If they said that, then that'll be what they'll be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, se the second question is that uh, in that same talk, uh, I don't know if I, I rewatched it like four times that they said that. And actually, there's an article from yesterday on Serum Table saying that you know, don't need to comply with the all three LCP, LCLES, and FID to get the ranking boost. And I think that came out wrong on the talk, maybe, because I follow your advice. I went to the forum. I posted a question. And I got the, the, the link, actually, to the frequent asked questions in which they state that all three need to be met. So that's something that we are seeing kind of contradictory information mm. And it's kind of very important knowing if you need to comply with all three or if you are I, okay with one. I think that's based on a comment that John made recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, the, the thing is, like, so for what's, what's really, really hard for me here is I do get asked uh, Core Web Vitals questions because it's a technical aspect. And for the technical aspect, I'm very happy to answer and help. But there's also a ranking aspect, and I have zero. I, I'm, I'm very honest. I have zero idea about ranking, and I really could not care less. 
So okay. whenever I get asked, no, it, it, it's we are not. It's quite interesting. Historically speaking, John and Gary do have insights into ranking um, because policy has been that they had access to these things in the past. Uh, we are not supposed to know much about ranking, and as I joined only in 2018, I actually never got access to any of the ranking-related bits and pieces. I did learn a bunch of stuff thanks to Gary and John, but I really, really don't want to answer any ranking-related things specifically. I have done in the recent couple of weeks and months because of Core Web Vitals, and it is very, very tricky for me to navigate this. So I'd rather just not say anything on the ranking topic. You, I would oh, oh. recommend going to John and asking him about it directly on Twitter, um, because I don't want to get into ranking. I already done that. If you see, and please tell the, tell him to, to reply to me. <laughs> uh, two, two more questions on the yeah. same topic. Uh, one is. Uh, on the forum, I got an answer from a platinum product expert. Mm -hmm. Does someone we should trust with their, their response? Is a Google employee? No. Who are those guys? Yeah. So uh, people who are helping out on the forum a lot get points. And then they can be uh, promoted to gold status, product experts, or to uh, platinum. Or I think there's even like diamond in some forms. I don't think we have that. Um, so it's non-Googlers, they're not Googlers, but they have been for a prolonged time of, uh, of activity, they have been like consistent with helping others in the forums. We have one here, Dave, you are uh, a product expert as well. So Dave Smart here in the, in the call is also, and generally most of them, as far as I'm aware, all of them, are very deliberate when they answer, and they make sure that they are answering um, to the best of their knowledge. But there might be cases where an answer might be formulated misleadingly or might be slightly off, or there might be some, some aspects to it that are not necessarily 100% clear or, or right. Um, but in general, I would trust them um, unless that directly contradicts Google documentation or Google statements. These people are not Google employees, yet I would generally trust them. No, I, I get it. I, I, I actually mm -hmm. got a very good answer this time, but since it was kind of controversial on, on the video, one thing was said on, on the yeah. document is another. So just to know if that's something they have the yeah. chance to check internally or not. They do have access to uh, Googlers more directly to get like uh, questions or like, basically to vet answers before they give them. That doesn't always happen though, so I would not say like trust everything they say, but I would in general trust them. And if they say something, it's normally a very high quality answer. Okay. Or, uh, the last one. Mm -hmm. The last one, very quickly on the same topic. Considering that Core Web Vitals is going to be global and. If you have a geo like Venezuela, for example, and mm -hmm. we want to create a different user experience for the mm -hmm. people in Venezuela, that could be considered cloaking because no. Google is going to be indexing something mm -hmm. and we're, we're being showing something different. No, uh, unless it is grossly misleading uh, and then suddenly the website that you're showing to Google is 100% different from, like, as in like completely different topically speaking uh, from what the user would expect. That is cloaking if it's just a different user experience and the cop the, the topic of the content is, is still more or less the same, that would not be considered cloaking, I think. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, then we had a question from Michael. Hello, Martin. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, hi Michael. Hello. Uh, so I have a page, we'll call it page A, with a mm -hmm. listing of products. Mm -hmm. Each product has a small, unique annotation to it. Uh, these, let's call them B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. It's not enough unique content to give them their own landing pages. It's a large website, and this would create a lot of thin pages. Uh, so I want to show these annotations, call them in a JavaScript modal on mm -hmm. page A, kind of the original landing page. How do I make sure that Google can access the unique content in those, and I want to make sure they aren't thought of as landing pages. I've seen the lyric site genius.com do this mm -hmm. by canonicalizing them back to the main page, but that feels untraditional. Is that a safe thing to do? I mean, if, if the content is very, very close to each other, we might anyway see it as a duplicate. So you might be good, good to go with this. Um, <sighs> 
with if if I may expand on that, mm-hmm. uh, with them, sometimes I've seen I can search uh, for one of the annotations, and it will tell me that it goes to the canonicalized page, and other times. Uh, not so it seems to be unreliable yeah it, i mean it is a hit and miss um mm. because it is so close so it it may or may not work um i'm having a little hard time visualizing how that would look like so you you have variations of a thing do i understand that correctly yes so we have a site that shows you what musical instruments artists use to make music so right. we'll have Eric Clapton's page, and it will have hundreds of guitars over the years. Right. It, you can click on each one, and an annotation pops up showing the context of how he used that individual guitar. Ah, okay. But that should not be thought of as a landing page per se. But I, I want to make sure that that unique content is crawled and uh, indexed. Or yeah, I'm, I'm uh, pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you would uh, put it in a modal and. Um, if you were to express the state in the URL, I would use a fragment. This, to me, sounds a lot like a fragment. Mm. Or speaking in HTML, it's a, it's like a, I think it's a dialogue, and then like has a, is it a? Dave, help me. It's, it's a di- It does sound like a dialogue, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think that could be done quite well in a dialogue. See, say. this is why I love our product experts. <laughs> we actually have two. <laughs> Hold on, Dido is, yeah, Dido. is, is Dido still here? If Dido is still here, then we have two product experts in today, right? Or is Giacomo also one? I don't know. Nope. If I'm if I'm missing anyone, Dido is still here. So we have two product experts in in the in the office hours today. <laughs> and Giacomo is not on. Okay, fair enough. You should become one. Anyway, um, so yeah, it, it sounds like it's it's doable. I would probably express it in a fragment because we usually don't really care about fragments. And fragments identify content that is part of the content anyway. And that does sound like it. And we ignore fragments. So I think fragments is probably a good idea. And then HTML-wise, a dialogue that like kind of, I think that would be, yeah, that would be how I would do it. Not sure about the canonicalization bit, though. Hmm. Yeah, OK, thanks page. very much. Sorry, Dave, you were saying? If they're on your page in the dialogue anyway, and you're just referring to them by fragment, then the kind of conversation isn't really kind of yeah. bad because it's all on page anyway. You just swerve in that problem. True. Good point. Good point. Ah, oh, God, I love to work with fantastic people. Uh, excellent. Now, that was that. I think, do we, do we have, uh, OK, chat. Oh, my, the chat has moved. Uh, we built a lot of web, I, also, Thank you, everyone who joined today, and all the lovely questions. It's this is amazing. I love this. Uh, I think we've never had this much activity, <laughs> or ra- rarely had this much activity in a JavaScript Q and A. Um, Carl has a question. We built a lot of websites based on a template we bought. It had lots of JavaScript files in it. We combined all the JavaScript files as a server request on page load. Page speed insights shows me that there could be sixty percent of JavaScripts. Safe for tested pages. Ah, be careful with that because uh, generally, my, maybe I don't know. Um, depending a little bit on how these libraries look like and how you combine them, uh, it might be possible that like sixty percent is actually unused. But especially if this JavaScript triggers on interactions, then you might actually remove things, or it might undercount. So there might be like actually only twenty percent or only ten percent are actually unused. The other missing fifty percent that is reported as unused only trigger and only execute when there's like some sort of user interaction. So ah, I would be very careful with these uh, statements um, coming from the tools, because the tools don't really interact with the page. So uh, we use the same JavaScript file for each sub page. Should we create JavaScript? Maybe, maybe at least not, maybe not for each sub page, but for each sub page type. So for instance, if you know that some JavaScript is used in a contact form, and that JavaScript should probably only be used uh, and loaded in a bundle that is for contact uh, for pages with contact forms. Um, if there's JavaScript that is only triggering for product pages, then maybe you should only use them on product pages and so on and so forth. So basically, try to like group things by features that you have on the page. And if uh, you can create bundles for each of these type of page, then that is definitely uh, a potential improvement. Try and measure. Your mileage may vary, uh, is my answer for that one. 
Um, or is it even better to have inline JavaScript? Ah, not really. Inline JavaScript has the downside that it can't be easily cached away. So uh, we are caching heavily. So if it's in JavaScript file, we would probably only retrieve it every so often. Whereas if it's in the HTML, we have to download all of that JavaScript over and over again. And same with browsers for users. So I wouldn't inline large amounts of JavaScript. With small amounts of JavaScript, maybe. Eugene has a question uh, regarding canonicals. May I tell Google somehow, hey, please don't use alternate canonical? Or no, you, you may not, because if that existed, then people would use it, would use it incorrectly, and we are back to square one. The reason why canonical is not a directive but a uh, signal or a suggestion, if you wish, is that a lot of people are using it incorrectly. And um, sounds harsh, but we can't trust people to not use things incorrectly, unfortunately. So nah. Uh, instead of escape fragments, is it OK to use AMP pages for users that would access the website from Google and the ones that would access the website? From uh, I guess that might work. Still feels like it's not a bad idea to get rid of the fragment URLs altogether. But if you can't, which I would understand, because that's a substantial change maybe in your in your stack, then that would potentially be a workaround. I don't know how well it would work, but I would try that out for sure. Uh, Carl is asking how to collect enough data for devices in Google Search Console for Core Web Vitals. How many users must visit a page? I'm working for a small business. Will I ever see anything there in Google Search Console? Um, we don't really have any specific numbers. It also comes with like smearing so that we, we don't uh, get like weird data or we accidentally uh, de anonymize it or de pseudonymize anyone. Um, if it's a small business, it's unlikely that you will see much, but it doesn't like really necessarily matter because you're probably not really in a niche uh, where there's so much competition and so much data available for your competitors that it really wouldn't matter much for your specific uh, case then. So if it's about products, couldn't they also use JSON LD markup? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Giacomo has questions. Woo, playing with the Chrome user experience data set and API, there are three form factors, desktop, phone, and tablet. Is mobile data an aggregation of tablet and phone, or just phone? Ooh. I don't know the answer to that question. That's a really good question. I'll have to ask someone about this. I don't know is the answer. It's a really good question. I was actually surprised that we are still gathering the third form factor, but OK. Uh, is the mobile friendly test Google does in the crawling, rendering, and indexing process done on the render tree and layout information or during the rendering in the Chrome instance? I'm pretty sure it's done on the render tree uh, plus layout information afterwards. Can I use AMP for a large dynamic website or is it applicable only for news? You can use AMP on a large dynamic website. That's perfectly fine. Uh, it doesn't help in ranking, though. AMP is not a ranking factor. It, if it's fast, it might at least give you that. So that would be potentially nice, I guess. Uh, Parag is having a question, has raised their hands. Uh, yeah. Hey, Martin. Hi. Uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. I hope you are doing great today. I am. Thank you very much. Likewise, I, I hope that you are doing fantastic today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my question is, uh, my website is web, uh, website is uh, high, uh, very uh, large website. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it it has a uh, millions of pages. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have my website is a mobile web, uh, mobile responsive website. But mm -hmm. uh, my website is not. Uh, uh, is my website affected by mobile first index update, or should I worry, or should I not worry about mobile first index? If my website is responsive and it works properly in mobile and and any other devices. If it is responsive and it works well on mobile, I wouldn't be worried about the mobile first indexing. OK, uh, so uh, I, I'll not worry about mobile first index update on my uh, website if my website is responsive. Mm -hmm. Then uh, is it uh, uh, is it affect in ranking Google search engine ranking where uh, mobile first index, if my competitor use AMP pages for their website and their pages are loading faster, so they will appear in first rank or first five rank in search engine result page where my website is uh, not optimized for AMP, so my website is uh, below their, their pages. Is there mm -hmm. any scenario happen with me or my website? 
So AMP doesn't really matter for that. But if it's faster, then page speed is a ranking factor. And all other things being considered equal, which they probably aren't, they might see uh, an, an advantage because their website is faster. Again, not because of AMP, but because their website is faster. OK, fine. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. You're very much welcome. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, do we have any? No. OK, so I think we have finally. Did I miss anything in the chat? I don't think I did. Whew. Those have been fantastic questions, and uh, lots of them. And I'm really, really happy to see so many people here in the, in the Hangout, 17 people in one go. That's amazing. Um, if we do not have any further questions, uh, I would wrap things up. But I'll give you like another, I don't know, 10 seconds uh, to either ping us in the chat or uh, to raise your hand um, if you have any further questions. If not, then I would like to thank you all for, oh, here we go. Do you have time? To... No, I did not have time yet uh, to check for the most common JavaScript error. The, the thing is. But the most common JavaScript error, I could figure that one out, but it requires a hell lot of actual uh, digging in the database. And my SQL foo is too weak for it. I know that I tried to find that out in 2018 already. And uh, I created a query that was running three hours and like was querying a few billion records. And I was like, oh, oh no. And then I stopped the query uh, before someone came over and said, like, Martin, you are wrecking a database. Um, so I need to find someone who can actually help me do the right thing inside our systems uh, to actually get the data out. I'm sure there is a way. <laughs> I just don't know that way. So I'm, I'm hoping for some time from someone who knows more than I do about our internal systems. Um, but I, I didn't have the time for it yet, unfortunately. That's, that's really, really. Yeah, Giacomo, nah, sorry. That, that I can't do. Uh, awesome. In which case, I'd like to say thank you all so, so much. I'll um, wrap this up in a moment and upload the recording to our YouTube channel. Uh, for everyone watching this later on, go check out the community tab um, for the thread on the next one on June 9th. And uh, maybe I see some of you again on June 9th or later. Uh, thanks a lot for joining. Thanks for all the fantastic questions. I really wish you have a fantastic day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and bye-bye.